Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The Metropolitan Board of Zoning Appeals is now in session for its regularly scheduled meeting of April the 3rd, 2014. I'm Joey Hargis, and I'll be presenting the cases for review in today's public hearing. I would ask that everyone in the room please either put your phone on silent or vibrate or turn it off um, so it doesn't ring during today's meeting. We'd appreciate it. The procedure will be to introduce the case record as the codes department has it. We'll do that on the wall there by means of a PowerPoint presentation. We'll present any letters that we've received in support or opposition to a case, as well as any correspondence we've received from other metro agencies. At the conclusion of our presentation, the applicants will come forward first to the table, along with any persons in support. Uh, after the applicant goes through their testimony, uh, they'll step off. The uh, opposition will then come up next, and they'll, they'll present their testimony. And then after the ap uh, opposition comes up, the applicant will have a chance to, for rebuttal. The board and their rules provide the applicants in cases without opposition 10 minutes to present your case to this board. In a uh, contested case, that's uh, cases with opposition, each the board provides 15 minutes per side. So if you're multiple folks who want to speak today, you get 15 minutes in total. Uh, divide that up before you come forward. Uh, when you do come forward, on the desk there I've got four chairs. Uh, you've got a microphone very similar to mine here at the podium. There's a little button on there that says speak. When you turn that on, the right turns red. Uh, identify yourself and make your presentation. And then when you get done talking, if you'll turn that off, please. We'd appreciate it. All section numbers I refer to today come directly from the Metropolitan Zoning Code, which is Title 17 of the Metro Code of Law. Title 17 was adopted by the Metro Council and became effective January 1st, 1998 and applies to the entire jurisdiction of Metro government. I'll introduce and make a part of the record the zoning code, a copy of which is at my desk behind me, and I'll dispense from reading individual sections unless the applicant or opposition requests that I read those sections. The zoning code requires that these proceedings be taped. Therefore, it's imperative anyone wishing to address this board to please come forward. Uh, come to the table, uh, identify yourself, and make your presentation. It should be noted that it's found that anyone's presented false or misleading testimony to this board, any decision by this board can be uh, approval, can be revoked by means of a show cause hearing. The board will go through all cases set for public hearing today, and after each case, the board will then discuss and vote on that case. The board is vested to act uh, on the cases today as outlined in section 1740. 180 of the Metro Code of Law. The code requires that four members of our seven-member board be present to constitute a quorum. The code also requires that you have four affirmative votes to grant your application. Uh, today I have five members present. You need four of these five board members uh, to approve your case uh, in the event, uh, excuse me, you need four of the five board members to approve your case for your case to be granted. Uh, we do have the unusual situation, and uh, should this arise, I'll discuss with our legal counsel. Um, in the event this any of our cases are tied on votes today, say a vote of three, four, two against, or two, four, and three against, uh, in the normal course of business, our, that case will stay on our agenda for the next 30 days. Uh, I think if we reach that situation, we may have to hold a special meeting since we do not have another regularly scheduled meeting for the next 30 days. Uh, so we'll deal with that if that arises today. And John and I will discuss kind of our procedure on that should that occur. Any applicant or agreed property owner may request a rehearing within 60 days of today's public hearing. And further, any applicant or agreed property owner may appeal this board's decision to Chantry or Circuit Court within the same 60-day period. But once 60 days has elapsed, this board's decision is final and no further action may be taken. If you're an applicant and your case is granted today, it is necessary for you to come and pick up the permit for which you've applied. should be noted you've got two years from today's date to come get your permit. Uh, if you do come within that two-year period and you obtain your permit, your um, permit is good uh, essentially forever, unless the board places some condition upon it. And Mr. Chairman, I submit that all cases were filed in proper order. All applicants were notified by certified mails required by the code. All affected property owners within 300 feet of the subject properties were notified by first-class mail, and a legal ad was published in the Tennessean. Uh, before I begin some of my preliminary announcements, uh, the board does allow elected officials to address the board should they wish to. I'll call at this time. Are there any elected officials who wish to address this board? Please come forward now. Hi, Councilman Claiborne. Any other elected officials present? Okay, Councilman, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Joy. Uh, I'm uh, Phil Claiborne. I represent District 15, uh, Donaldson, Two Rivers, Pennington, Bend area. I live at 2911 Western Hills Drive. Uh, it's my understanding that the issue that it, uh, I'm here for today is on the consent agenda. So I just want to take this opportunity, since I'm here, to, uh, to acknowledge the service that you give to the community. Having sat in one of those chairs back there for two years on the Planning Commission, I fully understand the uh, time commitment and the weightiness of uh, some of the decisions that you have to make. And uh, so I just want you to know that you're appreciated. Uh, and on behalf of the council, I wanted to say thank you for your service. And we do, uh, we do value you very highly. Thank you. And Councilman thank Claiborne, you thank you for your service to your district, too, and particularly even with this case as well. Okay, thank you, Councilman. And uh, as the Councilman alluded to, we do have a consent agenda, but before we get to that, a um, couple of preliminary announcements. One, uh, we'd had two cases scheduled for today's hearing regarding the Welch College properties out on West End Avenue. Both cases have been withdrawn by both applicants and uh, may be refiled at a later date. So if any parties are here for Welch College, no, nothing will occur on those. Those cases have been withdrawn from before this board. Uh, secondly, I would ask, and just, I'm gonna go through the agenda now and, and call for opposition that's present to any of these cases. If you're here opposed or have questions and concerns on any of these cases, please raise your hand uh, so I can make a note of it here. The uh, first case, um, calling for any opposition is case 2014-26, Ms. Teresa Mc Tressa McDaniel at 1612 24th Avenue North requesting a special exception in the RS5 district to use the existing residence as a daycare home for 12 <coughs> children. Are there any parties present opposed to case 26? Okay, seeing that. Next case, case 2014-28, Stephen Cates, the appellant, uh, Christopher Milan, the owner at 2516 Sharondale, requesting variances in front and side street setbacks and driveway in the RS10 district. Uh, is any parties present opposed to case 28? Who are here? Okay, seeing none. Uh, likewise, on case 29, the Dawson Fellowship, appellant and owner at 3200 McGavick Pike, requesting variances in street setback and visibility triangle requirements in RS-20 for an, install a new bus stop. He, any parties here opposed to case 29? Okay, I'm seeing none. Case 30, uh, Kim Young, the appellant West End Methodist Episcopal Church, owners of the property at 2200 West End, requesting a variance in the street setback for uh, a monument ground sign to be erected on the property. And any parties opposed to case 30 present? Okay, so no. uh, Case 2014-31, Perfecting Faith Ministry Church at 210 Battle Road, requesting a special exception AR2A to use a portion of the church as daycare for center for 75. I believe there's some folks here. I've, I've met them earlier. Are there any other parties I have not spoke to uh, here for present on that case? Okay. And finally, case 2014-32, uh, the Metropolitan Government, Percy Warner Parks, appellant and owner of the property located at Highway 100. Uh, this is actually at the intersection of Old Hickory and Highway 100, uh, requesting a variance in the parking lot, uh, paving requirements to uh, install a new parking lot there for the Warner Parks. Any parties here present uh, opposed or have questions regarding case 32? Joey, I have a comment about case 32 relating to Percy Warner Park. Um, I think it's been about four years ago. I was on the Friends of Warner Park's board for six years, but it's been four years. I'm no longer on the board. It's the Friends group is almost kind of an advocacy and fundraising group for those Warner Parks. So um, I just wanted to uh, let the record reflect that. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, having gone through that, we'll now go over the consent agenda. Uh, prior to today's meeting, a board member reviews the case uh, cases before today's hearing and if in their opinion the applicant meets the criteria for the application that has been requested and they feel that testimony in this case would not alter the material facts they recommend the case to the remainder of the board for approval I'll now enter into those cases those cases that have been recommended and if you are here in opposition uh, even though I've called for it let's make sure uh, please raise your hand I'll remove the case from consent we'll hear it in its regular order the uh, first case recommended for consent is that on page one, case 2014-26, Ms. Tressa McDaniel at 1612 24th Avenue requesting a special exception in RS-5 to use her home as a daycare home for 12 children. Again, I'll call for any opposition case 26. Okay, seeing that. Uh, this case uh, conforms to all the requirements of the special exception. The applicant uh, has held her neighborhood meeting as required by the code. And with that, Mr. Whitson recommends that case be placed upon consent. 
The next case recommended for consent, case two, on the middle of page two, case 2014-29, the Donaldson Fellowship, appellant and owners of the property at 3200, McGavick Pike requesting variances in street setback and visibility triangle on RS-20 to install a new bus stop in front of their church. Uh, any, uh, any parties present that uh, are opposed to case 29? Okay, Mr. Chairman, seeing none, the, uh, we do have comments from traffic and parking. They have looked at the proposal and they are uh, approving it will not create any sort of visibility issues at that intersection. And they have recommended approval to you. And with that, Mr. Whitson also recommends approval for this case. The uh, next case recommended for consent Case 2014-30, uh, Kim Young, the appellant, West End Methodist Episcopal Church, owners of the property at 2200 West End Avenue, requesting a variance in ORI zoning to construct a new monument ground sign on the property for West End Methodist Church. Is there anyone here present in opposition to case 30? Yeah. Okay. Seeing that. Uh, Mr. Whitson uh, places this case on the consent agenda. Uh, given the existing setbacks of the existing church, which actually would require the sign to be built inside the building, uh, he is uh, necessitating the shallowness of the lot as hardship for this case. And finally, uh, case 2014-32, Metropolitan Government, Pershing Warner Parks, the appellant owner of the property located at Zero Highway 100, requesting a variance in the paving requirements and to uh, construct a new parking lot for the Warner Parks. Any par parties present opposed to case 32? Okay. Seeing none, the, uh, this case is recommended on the consent agenda. Mr. Chairman, I think we had two other uh, parks developments where the paving was preferred, I mean the gravel was preferred to the paving due to stormwater runoff concerns. Uh, the stormwater office is in full support, uh, but the zoning code does require it to be paved. And with that, you're recommending the same conditions as placed on the other as well. Okay. Joey, um, my understanding is case 28 was not on there because there was a there was opposition this morning, but that, that opposition's been resolved. Is that the case, or uh, that's that is my understanding. I, we did receive phone calls uh, in our office at uh, like around the 9 a.m. hour. I'm sorry, we we have somebody who'd like to hear it. Anyway. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, then now that I've mucked it up, can you just repeat the sure. cases we're voting the, on? The uh, case is recommended by the chair for consent, case 26, 29, 30, and 32. Okay, so we have a motion. Is there a second? second. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. All in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. Uh, passes. Okay, if you're here for cases 26, 29, 30, and 32, you're all free to go. Your cases have been approved. Be sure to follow up with the Coast Department beginning on Monday morning uh, concerning your permits. And then we'll call the first case today, case 2014-28, are the applicants present? If you'll come forward to the table. We'll, uh, we'll go through. First, I'll show all the photographs and such for my part, and then I'll turn it over to you all. Again, Colin, is there any opposition present to case 28? Okay, seeing that. The uh, subject property is located here, you see, at the intersection of Marlin Avenue and Sharondale Drive. It is in the RS-10 zone district. Um, the current use of the property is a legally non-conforming duplex. Uh, evidence has been submitted to our office, uh, which we've accepted um, that used to be legally non-conforming. Under the zoning code, uh, non-conforming duplexes in RS zoning districts are permitted to demolish and reconstruct a duplex, um, but they are also given the ability to separate those dwellings into two separate structures. So what you'll see on the site plan are two homes, but by definition the zoning code is a duplex uh, use. Uh, there's currently a bill pending within the council, I won't use pending as far as pending ordinance doctrine, but a bill has been filed in the council, uh, which uh, I'll take a moment to stand that I support, that would allow all duplexes to be separated in two separate structures should they choose to, and not have the four to eight foot umbilical cord connecting them. So uh, for the record, that's my commentary. Um, with that, the uh, subject property you see here is at the intersection of Marlin and Sharondale, and then this is a site plan submitted by the appellant. 
the uh, request, as I said, is to construct the duplex use back that, it, that can be in two separate structures. The code requires that those structures be a minimum of 10 feet apart. They are showing 15. The issues here are threefold. I'm going to take them slightly uh, out of sequence, Let's starting first with the driveway distance separation from the intersection. Sharondale is classified as a collector street. The zoning code requires that driveways that uh, are on streets that intersect with collectors. Joey, can you tell us what a collector street is? I was really hoping you would not ask me. <laughs> but a collector street is defined by the major and collector street plan. That's a plan developed by the planning department. Uh, collector streets are generally the, the busier neighborhood type streets. Um, as opposed to Murfreesboro Road, Gallatin Road, Old Hickory Boulevard, Nolan's Road, those are arterial streets. That's the major uh, traffic. Uh, collector streets are the streets that collect, <coughs> by definition, they collect traffic from the neighborhoods and channel that traffic toward the arterials. And why it's important is the setbacks are different, the right? The setbacks are different along Sharondale. Uh, they do, re I mean, along collector streets in general, they're typically double of what's required of neighborhood streets. Marlin on this drawing is a neighborhood street, a local street. Um, and so the, the first uh, appeal it deals in the, the bottom right hand will start is the driveway distance. This ramp cut here, because Sharondale's a collector by code, is required to be 50 feet from this intersection. Uh, they are requesting 23.8 feet. The uh, Public Works Department, uh, Devin Doyle, you should have an email from, uh, has reviewed it, and they are taking no exception to the request here at this ramp. Um, the second issue is the street setback along Sharondale itself on the front unit. Um, the setback minimum required out here is a 60-foot setback based upon the average of this home to the, to the west, I guess it is, and the um, Marlin Avenue. We treat Marlin as a vacant lot for purposes of determining this setback. So the average comes out to be 60 feet. They are requesting 50 feet. And the hatched area which you see in the structure is that portion of the structure that's within that setback. The side street, uh, because Marlin is a local street and this lot was created prior to 1998, it is allowed to reduce its normal setbacks of 20 feet down to 10 feet, which you see noted on the drawing. They're proposing a 13 and a half foot setback and a 14 foot setback from Marlin. The issue here though is at this garage door. Um, there's a conflicting part of the code that says when garage doors face a public street, there's a minimum setback for the garage door of 20 feet. Uh, the thought behind that, I think at the time, pretty sure I was here when this was adopted, was to allow cars to get off the street, get onto the private property uh, to allow the garage doors to lift or if they have to get out and raise them manually um, so you wouldn't have the vehicles sitting out in the street. But So that's the nature. The buildings itself are fine along the street setback of Moreland. Uh, but for the garage door, that this structure actually would conform. And so those are the three variances uh, dealing with that we're dealing with today. The uh, subject property is uh, the home in which you see here. Uh, I'm staring at, standing on Sharondale, looking right into the subject site. And Marlin Avenue is over to the right of this photograph. Then the property is to either side along Sharondale. Sharondale curves here continues off to the north. This is Marlin. And then the structure would be located. This home would be demolished. The two new, the new duplex, the two structures would be built here. And this photograph uh, was intended to show the intersection there at Marlin and Sharondale. Okay, I'll turn it back to the site plan with that. That concludes my uh, testimony. As I said, you did receive a letter from Traffic and Barking. Uh, not taking any exception to the to the driveway distance re uh, request. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, sir. I'm Steve Cates with Cates Builders. Uh, we have uh, spent a fair amount of time uh, with an architect uh, trying to uh, fit in the appropriate architecture here, noting that the uh, lot reduces dramatically going from front to back. Uh, but moreover, versus having a garage facing out onto Sharondale and having vehicles dumping in and out of Sharondale, since it is a collector, we thought it was safer and a wiser use of the property uh, to put the garages on Marlin and to do a, a garage versus a carport. Uh, so really the request is so that we can have a garage versus a carport. Um, there will be automatic garage doors. 
uh, so that they don't have to get out and open the garage door. Uh, keep in mind also that there is a pavement from the right of way to the edge of pavement on top of the 10 foot minimum setback line. So unless somebody was driving a Suburban or something like that, it really wouldn't come into play anyway. Uh, but the garage doors will have a mechanical opener, uh, even if somebody did have a Suburban. So uh, don't think that's an issue uh, from a safety perspective. Um, otherwise, uh, we're, we have uh, uh, brought along the elevations that Michael Ward has done. Uh, that you know trying to take into consideration uh, the architecture of the area uh, and, and enhancing so I like to ask any question that answer any question that you may have and I did note in the preliminary submittal it showed an average square footage these homes are a little bigger and I know that's not part of the request anyway but just to set the record straight yeah good okay uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to recuse myself from this case. I, I know the architect. So that means you. Yeah. So <laughs> come back later. Thank you. I'm sorry. sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. No, no, that's in, that's material. So yeah, and I, and you I, should I, have I said that. When I saw the elevation, but I, yeah, yes, this, I have a. I, I, yes. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Taylor. The record reflects Mr. Taylor is accused of trouble in this case and is departing the room. But yes, sir, I'll come get you just as soon as this case is over. Mr. Cates, can I ask you a few questions? Um, the way we're empowered to grant variances is by finding a hardship um, which necessitates the variance. I think in your written materials, but I think it would be helpful, um, perhaps you could tell, I mean, I think you orally said it, but, but it, the, I think it's the narrowing of the lot that is causing you to... Yes, Mr. Whitson, uh, the lot is irregularly shaped, uh, and so the only way uh, to produce homes with garages in the right place uh, would be for the variance because of the irregular shape lot. You can see it pinches down, I think, 30 feet, uh, and it's a very unusual shape in that there's a couple bins in it as well. Uh, so to make everything work, that's what's required. How do you address the uh, front setback off of Sharondale from 60 down to 50? What's the yeah, it's in a, yes, sir, Mr. King, uh, the road is in a significant curve there. Uh, and so uh, the front setbacks vary all up and down. And so it was felt uh, that if you're actually looking at the house to the right and the one before that, that the transition works well there. Uh, but in addition, because it does pinch down, uh, having some additional green space uh, in the back made more sense than taking the garage and putting a garage door in the front and pushing it back. So that's really not a hardship. Uh, or a self-created hardship, if it is a hardship, wouldn't you say? Uh, it would be a hardship uh, in that uh, if the house pushed back, uh, you wouldn't have the required distance between structures. But can you reduce the size of either or both of those houses somewhat to comply with the code? We could not. We, not? we attempted that. We could not get the appropriate space sizes. Appropriate to what? Uh, market. So this is market driven rather than basic need or? Well, how big are some of the other houses? I'm sorry, answer the okay. question. Yeah, they, they vary all over the place. Some are significantly larger, uh, some are a little smaller. But he asked if it's market driven or need. I mean, so what's, why is this size house necessary to, you know, put on this lot? Well, let me ask another way. The duplexes that are, you're replacing, how big are those versus what you've submitted? I don't know. I have not calculated the size of the existing duplexes. You have no guess or no, no idea? Is it bigger? Uh, I would say no, but I, don't, I have not measured it. 
So it's within, you know, a few that, hundred feet one way or the other. It's not substantially. Yeah, the, the problem here is that they have a freestanding garage mm -hmm. that's built in the rear setback. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is by the time you try to configure garages without going into the existing setbacks, it's impossible to duplicate what you need from a from a ground floor standpoint. If we could, you know, I didn't think it was appropriate to ask to, you know, put a structure in the rear setback. I felt like that was crucial, considering that there was still a significant amount of green space left in the front. That, as you can see, as you come back uh, more towards the right, uh, those distances really pinch down. Three houses back, it pinches down. It looks like. To about 40 feet so it was really a transition and as you go around the curve you can see mm -hmm. those two houses are down in the 20 to 5 to 30 foot front setback so what I'm actually used to is taking the average of six setbacks and coming up with a number and it felt like to me that five was more representative of the grand total of the street but the real issue is the hardship and that the current garage two-car garage is in the rear setback what about the curve of the road that was brought up recently? So, what does that have to do with the setbacks and where you positioned it? You know, it's a it, it would be a great case study to see why every house varies so significantly down through there. Uh, but I think, uh, as you can see, as you go around the curve, the front setback is significantly less uh, than the setbacks uh, of the house that uh, that we are looking at. How many square feet is each one of these houses? Uh, I think uh, one is, right now we're in design, 3167. I think the other one is 3,068. Pretty substantial houses, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is, you know, a lot right now, uh, cars um, are not necessarily have a garage space and I think it's important to to get the cars in the garage versus leaving them on the street is there any parking on the street is it I haven't seen any striped but do people park on the street yes I've seen cars on the street Mr. Hargis, do you mind showing the photograph, please? Sure. I just want to be sure I understand. Are we talking about the variances only apply to the, it's only one lot we're talking about? Yes. But currently, okay, on this photograph, where where is the parking structure that you're talking about? Uh, back right corner, back rear left corner. Yes, right there. Okay, that's it. Okay. I just couldn't make that out. I understand. Joey, or either applicant or Joey, I'm, I'm not sure you remember. How far is the setback on the, to the house that's to the, I guess it's the east of Marlin? I don't have that. For our purposes, that house doesn't come into play on the setback calculation. I actually knew that. I, I, I'm just trying to... I mean, because we do this by averaging, so I'm trying to, I guess, figure out how hard and fast and how important that 60 is. Um, Mr. Whitson? Mm-hmm. I've spoken numerous times with. Sorry, I've spoken numerous times and met numerous times with the gentleman in that house, and that is not an issue to him. He he feels like it was the right decision. His primary concern is what are the garage doors going to look like. Uh, and when we talked this morning, we came to an agreement on what the garage doors would look like, and that was his concern.
and actually brought those garage doors if you desire to see. No, there any more. Okay, so we have no more questions. Okay, I guess we'll move to uh, close the public hearing. Okay. Yeah, close the public hearing on case 28. Discussion? I understand what the, the goal and objective here is, but they're requ requesting three variances. It, to me, it seems like they might be trying to put too much house on one property. I think there's probably a way to resolve it and at least get down maybe to one variance, not three. I think it's depressing a little bit. I'd be hard pressed to support that, especially when I think they're probably self-imposed uh, hardships. Joey, can you put up the variances again that they're asking? Sorry, I have to touch it. <laughs> okay. I mean, to me, the driveway distance doesn't matter as much since this is a duplex and we're undoing it, so it's kind of common ownership, so I don't really see that as as pressing as the other two variances in the street setback, 60 versus um, 50, and we could have the argue, argument about whether Collector Street is or not. Um, 50 is still pretty substantial. Garage door. Hmm. I mean, that's one of those. Once again, it easily affects the immediate neighbor. One of the immediate neighbors is obviously this development. We don't see any. There was no other opposition or letters, Joey. For or what was earlier? It's, we got some calls. I, I did receive some phone calls about 9 a.m. this morning. Um, just asked, inquiring about the. There were the inquiries or were there uh, opposition? Well, it was inquiries um, as to. Getting able to look at the plan, and I explained to them what the variances were, and I also emailed over to them a copy of the site plan. Um, and did you hear anything back after that? I did not alert them. You know what time we're meeting sure. today and such, but I did not hear back. You know, to, to me, I know you feel differently. This, these variances are are pretty small and reasonable given this kind of curved street and the shape of the lot trying to do this. Well, again, I don't think there's that. I, I don't have a big problem with the garage, I mean the driveway distance, but I just feel like these are substantial size houses. They could be cut down a little bit in size and probably fit better with the, I know they would fit better with the, uh, the property. Get a little closer into the nearness of the uh, compliance with the, the code. I just think it may be asking too much house on the property, so I don't, I, I find it hard to support that myself, given that they're two brand new buildings, you know. They look nice, I agree. <laughs> I actually fall into the category with David, uh, I'm I'm actually comfortable with the three variances, um, but this is a question. I, I never, I certainly um, never want to question anybody else's thought pattern, and I also don't. Uh, sometimes I, I, this is a question. I. I don't like these situations where there are only four of us and you need mm -hmm. four. They make me a bit squeezy. Would, this is a question for you, because you're the one who's not in favor that I know of. I mean, we, we may be two and two, or we may be three and one. I always get a little bit queasy when there are only four of us and you have to get all four. Would you, and I'm going to need Joey here as my main secretary, but would you be opposed if we deferred it and had a more full board to look at it? I wouldn't be opposed. Is that appealing let's, to anybody besides me? Yeah, let's. Can we open up and ask the applicant if they're okay with that too? Yeah. Yes. That would be difficult considering a closing uh, coming and uh, some schedules, and you have, obviously you have to do what's best uh, for the board. Um, I will say we have 
met with all the different departments within the city to ask their thoughts. Uh, they've all been positive. Um, you know, we've, we've worked tirelessly to actually get to this point from a design standpoint. Uh, so we, it would be wonderful if we could get a vote today. It would be very well, difficult to wait. Okay. Well, I, I understand that. You know, what Chris was saying, it's it just by kind of reading the tea leaves, it looks like you, you know, have two votes, maybe three votes, and there's one against, and you need four. So, um, so if we vote today, which is why he was asking to defer it, you probably won't get four votes. I don't know, but that's just kind of how it is. And so therefore, if you didn't have four votes, you can't get a permit unless you just build to the actual um, code. May I offer another solution that's slightly different than what's on the board? We will entertain that, yes. Uh, if I go back and, and tweak the design, uh, would you be favorable uh, to a front setback of just a five foot reduction, which is still significantly different than a lot of the other houses that are down there? Is it appears that's the one that is the most concerning. I would like to ask our, our lawyer about kind of as it relates to advertising and you, you hit it on the head. We I always advise the board to refrain from giving advisory opinions or if X plus Y then Z kind of uh, predicted outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the track record with this board is they're always willing to entertain uh, revised applications or okay. remodeled applications, but. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't jump in and say we're not in the business of giving a, okay. if it looks this way, then yes, kind of a prediction. I'd like to request that uh, the front setback be 55 feet instead of 60 feet, instead of 50 feet. Let me ask uh, Council this. Would, would we be empowered to approve it with the condition that it be reduced? Condition on the setback and not 50, but since it's less as far as notice is concerned, too, I guess is what I, I think so. In light of the fact that you have no present opposition, uh, no, I don't think any letters in the file on this particular case of opposition, I don't think you'd be facing any problems there. Um, yes, it could be done as a condition, particularly given the fact that it's been offered by the applicant in that case, uh, as opposed to just you know, condition without being asked by the board. So I think that is doable. So with an extra five feet, is that more amenable to you? Well, it certainly is to me. I mean, it's a do you do you have a motion then? Where's our cheat sheet? I, was <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that you want me to make a motion. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I, I will um, do my best. Um, oh, thank you. I move that the board approve the respective variance request because all of the requirements of MCL 17.40.370 have been met. The board finds that the unique characteristics of the property are the bend in the road, the narrowness of the lot, the odd shape of the lot. However, it is contingent upon only encroaching into the front set back by five feet as opposed to ten feet. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is that word correct, Mr. Council? That's right. Okay. That kind of hurt. But yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, so we've got a motion, we've got a zagging all in favor. Uh, Any opposed? Passes. Thank, Thank you for your time. For Thanks it. for working with me. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chair, if we take just a moment to recess, let me go get the uh, our fifth member, and then we'll get underway with our next case. Sixteen one seventy C. The appellant has alleged the board would have jurisdiction under section seventeen forty one eighty item C. Oh. The applicant's present and the opposition is present. 
Uh, both sides of the case will have 15 minutes to present their uh, testimony. As I mentioned earlier, multiple speakers, uh, either on the applicant or opposition side, please divide your time before coming. The applicant will have a period for rebuttal. That means they can get to go after the opposition. Uh, but the time that you have to spend on that rebuttal will be what you reserve uh, at the end of your comments at the beginning. But first I'm going to go through the, the photographs and go over the code. Um, and explain to the board why you were here. <laughs> okay. The uh, subject property you see here is at the uh, southwest corner intersection of Old Hickory Boulevard and Battle Road. It is in the AR2A zone district. Um, the request is to use a portion of this church as a daycare center uh, for a maximum of 75 in, uh, individuals. The uh, zoning code, um, find my book section here, sorry. code refers to this section under section 17 16 170 letter C um, deals with daycare centers uh, going through this would be a class 3 day, uh, excuse me class 3 daycare center to a maximum of 75 individuals uh, the code requires that the minimum lot size shall be uh, one acre one and one half acre um, the uh, landscape buffers required along the common property lines at a standard C. And uh, item eight under that code, the um, we don't have this issue before us today, but the um, daycare centers are considered under the zoning code a preferred location when they are accessory to another institutional use such as a church or child care or a uh, community center facility or uh, abuts a multi-family zoning district or non-residential zoning district. Again, that's not an issue today because the street standard, is which you see here on Oak Hickory Boulevard, is covered. The, um, again, the property is in the AR2A zoning district. This is a look at the subject property. The church itself did not come before this board. Churches are permitted as a matter of right under the zoning code. Uh, as this board's familiar with seeing numerous churches come to this board for approval for construction uh, as to why they did not have to come here. They're zoned agriculturally and they are permitted as a matter of right. You see the uh, aerial photograph of the subject church. Uh, this church, this photo is taken about 18 months ago or so. This is the site plan submitted by the applicant. Uh, the daycare center would be located in this wing of the church facility. The playground will be located to the rear of the uh, subject property, of the uh, subject building. It would be for a maximum of 75 children. This is a view of the subject property is looking from the driveway that leads into the site. Uh, the parking area is located at the front of the structure. Daycare would be housed in this back rear portion of the property. Um, orienting you again up on the bottom right, sorry these are a little bit out of sequence here, but the, the uh, bottom right photograph is closer into the subject property. I've, I've moved into the site. Again that wing located here is this structure in the upper right photograph. And the playground would be located to the rear of that structure. This view is along the uh, parking lot along that side, on the side of the structure there. Uh, the code also requires for residential daycare centers to have uh, a, a circular drop-off point. There is a covered drop-off point at this location here at the uh, front entrance of the church. I'll put back the site plan. Um, they are seeking no variances in their request. This is um, a special exception use under 1716-170. And with that, I'll turn it over to the applicant. Um, sir, you'll have 15 minutes to present your testimony. Uh, prior to the hearing, I did check, as I did with the first daycare, they did hold a neighborhood meeting uh, with the mail list as provided by this office uh, that does go out 300 feet. Um, 
as you'll note, given that 300 foot distance, um, these are large acreage tracks out here that doesn't, uh, you don't end up with a lot of individuals on that list, but they have complied with that. So we can proceed. So how many people did you have to send it to? We sent a notice out. Um, and explain that again. Once again, you send it within 300 feet yeah, of the, the affected farm. Yeah, the zone code farm. requires that um, all property landowners be sent a, a first class mail within 300 feet, and that mail list included a total of 16 individuals, including the church itself. Okay. Okay, with that, we'll turn over our case record. Uh, I do believe you have some comments from the planning department in regards to the case and uh, public works as well. And with that, I'll turn it over to the applicants. You'll have 15 minutes to present your case to the board. Uh, again, after your time, um, you'll have a period for a rebuttal of, of your remainder. Uh, and then for all parties here, uh, we didn't necessarily run into it in the last case. Um, after giving your testimony, the clock will run. It'll stop for questions. So if the board asks a question of anyone, we'll stop the clock and let them answer, and then we'll start the clock back up. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to you guys. Thanks. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Philip Hammonds. I'm here representing Perfecting Faith Ministries in regards to Kingdom Kids Academy, the daycare we wish to uh, receive this permanent exception for. Um, I've been a member of Perfecting Faith since 2010, October. Um, and I'm also an, an educator as well. And so I see the benefit of, of having um, the daycare at our church to provide the type of education that will support um, not so much the efforts of our church, but our community as a whole. Um, we did hold a meeting. Um, I also went door to door, uh, spoke with uh, Mr. Clark, who's here, uh, Marcy, a couple other neighbors. I wasn't able to get to uh, everyone exactly. Um, and also, we uh, worked with our councilman, Mr. Robert Duvall, um, who also attended the meeting and you know voiced his support. Um, he also sent a letter, I believe, to the commission. Um, I was just made aware today um, some of our neighbors in terms of opposition, and we're willing to work, you know, to uh, you know accommodate that because we do want to be a good neighbor. We're here to support the community we're in, and so uh, we're we're willing to to work with our neighbors on that. Um, I do think the daycare would be a, a contribution uh, to our community. I think it would be an asset to our community, and uh, we're devoted to to providing quality service uh, for children in that area. And whoever uh, may visit that area on their way to downtown Nashville, or whatever the case might be. So um, we're not going to discriminate on, on any grounds, but we're just looking to provide a quality service, quality education, quality atmosphere that we know we can. And so that's why um, we're here. Our addition was uh, completed in 2013, and uh, much, uh, many of the codes and things like that uh, in terms of DHS were met because you know we're serious about providing, you know, even for our youth department at our church, we're serious about providing providing a safe environment for our kids. So um, those those steps have been taken. And you know, like I said, we're here uh, to go through all the proper channels to uh, make sure that we're operating above board and do what is required. Can you tell me, um, you said that you'd spoken with some of the neighbors and that you're willing to accommodate some of their concerns. Can you tell me what the types of concerns are that you all talked about? And from your perspective, what you would do to accommodate that? Well, the ones that I spoke to uh, voiced their support. Uh, they didn't have any immediate concerns. Um, the concerns that uh, were brought to my attention were just today as I met some of our neighbors uh, here. Um, they're making concern of their voice. I mean, they can speak for themselves, but, um, you know, they spoke of traffic on... Um, on Battle Road. Um, if you look at the um, one of the pictures in terms of the maps, you know we're located uh, closer to Old Hickory Boulevard um, as it sort of separates um, from from Burkett, and so even a lot of our parishioners, you know, come that way in order to get to our church, and I think that. Um, may allay some of those concerns on the traffic on the other end of Battle Road as you head, uh, I believe, south or head east um, along Battle Road. Uh, I'm assuming you've seen the recommendation of the Planning Commission, and they recommend approval with one condition, which is the existing tree line shall be maintained and supplemented where necessary to a standard C buffer yard. Are you willing to do that? I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm not sure. You're talking about the one located where the pointer is? Uh, yes, yes, it would be that one. Yeah, that actually sits on a hill, and we are not um, 
we're not planning to disturb that. We've actually built a fence at the bottom of the hill, which runs along the back of the church and where the play playground is located. So actually that, that hill itself and that tree line serves as a buffer, which I think uh, benefits protection and safety for our students. Okay, what they say is significant tree areas are present along the northern and southern property lines. Planning staff recommends that these areas be retained and supplemented if necessary to a standard sea buffer yard and that a standard sea landscape buffer be included along the western property line where possible. Um, slopes exceeding 25% are present along part of the western property line. Well, I think we'll need to uh, definitely, uh, I think we'll need to review that. Um, we did uh, actually at the uh, sort of the intersection of Battle Road and uh, Old Hickory Boulevard, um, we have done some clearing since this picture was taken, um, and that was prior to uh, the recommendation um, that you're referencing. But uh, again, we'll seek to comply. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Not present. Okay, we'll save 13 minutes for rebuttal and we'll hear from the opposition. Thank you. Okay, the board will uh, now hear from those parties opposed. If you'd like to, please come forward. I have the three chairs there if you wish to use them all. Feel free. Appreciate y'all hearing us. My name is Terry Rucker, or Beckett Rucker. I live at 329 Battle Road, which is on down Battle Road this way, along with my wife. Um, we were not notified of the meeting. Now, I really don't know, and I was going to ask uh, the gentleman earlier, where does the 300 feet start? Because the church also owns the property in behind it there. so. You know, if you're going 300 feet from the driveway, you're talking about one residence, which is Dan here. It runs um, from the blue line, which you see on the drawing there. It'd be from that property line. Yeah, well, the neighbors over here did not get a notice that this was going on. And the sign is laying flat on the ground, so we didn't even know about it till this week. And, you know, if we can, I can get a petition. You know, we, we talked to all the neighbors. None of these are people are for simply because of the traffic concerns. Battle Road, I don't know whether you can tell it or not, maybe if you've got another picture, it's a glorified driveway. And, you know, on Sundays and Wednesday afternoons, we can't even go out to walk anymore because of the traffic coming back and forth. We have no problem with, you know, daycares and all, but there's probably a better place to put a daycare than at the corner of O'Hare Boulevard and Battle Road. I think it'd be a whole lot safer for the residents and a whole lot safer for the kids. You know, I, uh, my suggestion was you go to Hickory Hollow Mall, there's plenty of buildings there to put a daycare, a whole lot easier to get to, a whole lot safer for everybody concerned. But, you know, the whole thing is, and, and we can get a petition up, but nobody knew down from Dan's house, I don't guess, really knew about the daycare going in. Daniel. Uh, again, my name is Daniel Clark. Uh, my wife, Sue Burkett, and I own the property immediately across the street from the church. We have seven and a half acres there. So as far as Battle Road goes, I was the only one who did receive a letter. Now, there are residents, another 14 or so along Old Hickory Boulevard, who received a letter and apparently chose not to come forward. Our only concern, my wife's an educator uh, in Metro. Uh, we think highly of all the, the need for daycares uh, and early education, so we're in favor of that. The traffic flow is a problem for us. There is uh, just a two-lane road with no shoulder, no sidewalks. And uh, if we would be in favor of this project, should they include an entrance off of Old Hickory Boulevard that would give a traffic flow in and out without having to go both directions. We are also experiencing a tremendous amount of traffic due to all the new subdivisions on Battle on Burkett Road. And uh, to get off of, of uh, Battle Road onto Burkett uh, is a, and Old Hickory is quite a problem right now for traffic. 
and I'm sure that the city is probably considering a traffic light at that location. But again, no, no problem with this uh, daycare. We would like to see it amended to give a, a, a separate entrance off of Old Hickory Boulevard to take the traffic flow off of Battle Road, which is a, a very small road. All of us have anywhere from seven to 15 acres on that road. So uh, the 300 foot limit, I think, is a little absurd when you're looking at an agriculture area. We still operate a farm, raise cattle and horses there. So the 300 foot limit only took on Battle Road just one person. The, uh, the meeting that was held my understanding, and, and from what I understood, and, and I hope I didn't misunderstand it, but there was one neighbor and one councilman there. The councilman has never contacted us about this going in. Now, it may be that we was out of the 300 feet and he had no duty to do it, but you would think that with all the traffic going down, you know, that little small road that the councilman would at least ask us our opinion on it. Um, you know, our concern here is, is, you know, when they put the building in up there, nothing was ever said about the daycare. You know, it was for the Sunday school building. And I guess, I, you know, we're just tired of, um, you know, being ran over out there and, 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 and almost literally, you know, from the cars coming in and out and up and down that street there. I agree with Dan, you know, the, the, the road going in over here Boulevard may help, but I think that's awful dangerous. Uh, I think, you know, that they could probably find a better location for it than there. I don't know if y'all know that now, but there's a lot of, right, right there in that curve right there, that thing doesn't straighten out exactly like that. And there's a, like a wreck up there every month from cars flying up the hill and trying to make that curve there. And they're always landing in the neighbor's yard across the street over there. So it's kind of a dangerous area right there to be going out that way. Battle Road is no better because of, you know, the width of it and all. We just, you know, if nothing else, can we get this delayed? Do we get more neighbors up here? Because everybody we call knew nothing about it. They're either out of town, they were working, whatever. So, you know, you know, before it goes too far, you know, we can get a petition if that would help. But uh, none of the neighbors down Battle Road knew anything about this. I appreciate your time. I'm, I'm just going to take this opportunity to, to clarify because I really don't want any misunderstanding. The 300 feet is not tailored to the type of zoning districts. It's just a Metro Council rule. And in certain parts of the county, 300 feet covers a lot of human beings, and in other parts it does not. So the church did exactly what's required of it. Now, I'm not questioning at all the effect it had on y'all because I can look at the map as well but I really don't want um, the misperception that anybody was trying to blow anything apart now now having said that I'm all for people talking and so when the church comes back up I'm going to encourage them to talk um, but but I really don't want the misperception on the TV that there was something untoward done here because they they followed the law perfectly so we understand that, and I, I'd just like to say that uh, the county has urban services and it has farm property, and we're we're not in the urban services area, and I think they need to amend that law. I, I, rule, I, I actually say. think that's a very solid point, and so we're going to hope that some Metro Council member is watching us and brings that up. Um, so anyway, because your point's well taken. I just don't want anyone to think anything untoward was done because the church did exactly what they're required to do. Anything else? The church has been a good neighbor. We have no problem with no. the church at all. Anything else you want us to consider? No. No, sir. Appreciate you hearing us, but... Uh, we either like to get it delayed or, you know, done away with one of the two. I'd like to ask you one question. Yes, sir. You're really not opposed to the use being a daycare, but it's the property, the traffic is your concern? Or? That would be my concern, yes. And yours, sir? Yeah, the traffic is the main concern. Um, you know, it's just that every time the church has done something up here, and, and they've been good neighbors, it's just that it's, you know, it's, you know, they were, it hadn't been always exactly what what was in mind, you know. So, uh, my I guess our biggest concern right now is the traffic going up and down Battle Road. Mr. 
you know, and, and just so I understand the neighborhood, um, the traffic, is it true from y'all's experience, the, the traffic uh, from the church property on Battle Road is primarily from their driveway to Old Hickory, just that that stretch? I, or do they actually? Use Actually, if you look at the, the map, uh, Burkett Road, Battle Road years ago was not cut in two, but when they built Cane Ridge Park, uh, part of Battle Road is up by the park. It was cut off and brought down about a quarter of a mile. So the short section of Battle Road that we're referring to connects Burkett Road to Old Hickory Boulevard. And it's, it's become a, a connector road for people who want to go in that direction uh, to, to use that to go, to cut through. Okay. I think there were only, there are only uh, 10 or maybe 11 residents on that stretch of road. All of us having, again, you know, five to 15 acres of land. And uh, it's, it's become a traffic problem just in normal circumstances. We're concerned with the with the, the morning traffic, adding to it the daycare services without, you know, there's only one way in and one way out of the church, and that's off of, of Battle Road. And if there were any way to connect a drive-through that came back out onto Bat or Old Hickory Boulevard, it would make it a safer for the for the community, well, I think. And that, that's something we can talk with the pastor about in a, in a minute. And, you know, and, and I appreciate your feedback because when I, was, when I look at this, you know, you have to you know, look at, at that piece of property, what is the impact of, of the, uh, the the parents bringing their kids on traffic? And it sounds like that, you know, to me, and just, uh, and I'm, asked, I'm telling you my observation so that you can react to it while you still are uh, at the table, is that the people are using um, that road as, as a cut through now, and it really is independent of the church. I mean, it's happening because of the density of the area and that type of thing. And so the marginal, you know, that little extra bit of traffic um, is, is, is adding more irritant to the problem, but it by itself, let's say, if, if, they, if there were, if people weren't using it as a cut through now, 35 more cars a day probably isn't going to make it a difference at 8 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It, it's, I, I guess it, what I'm hearing is a bigger problem that's a little bit independent of, of, of this situation. It certainly would add to the problem, yes. And and so, 75 and cars it, in the morning, 75 more in the afternoon. Well, it, and I guess, and, and it may, possibly, it, assuming that they max out, you know, they're asking for a capacity of 75 people. That doesn't mean they'll always have 75 people. You know, we have folks, that, you know, I guess earlier today, a, a, a woman wanted 12, the ability to have 12. Well, you know, she may only have 10 or five or only two, but she has permission to have up to 12. Uh, so permission to up to 75. And then as, if you assume that each person only has one child, then that could be 75 cars maximum. You're right. But if you assume that, you know, well, no, people have two kids, some have three, on average they have two, and they don't reach capacity, then maybe it's only 20 or 30 cars. But yeah, you're right, if, if in the worst case scenario, it could be, it could be 75 cars, the way, I, the way I would read it. That, that helps me understand the situation, thank you. Well, we would appreciate, you know, if you could defer it and let everybody, you know, yeah, enable we're it to come up or... We're gonna talk to the that. applicant. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank y'all for listening to us. Thank you. Chris, are you going to start us out? Uh, sure. I'm just impressed Linda got it back to 1301, though. I was thinking she might have rounded. it. Um, you've heard the opposition. Um, I, for one, and I think this board is a big believer in communication solves a lot of problems. Um, it, it makes sense, at least from, and, and also I, I will say, I don't know how easy it is to get an entrance onto Old Hickory Boulevard, but that just from where I sit makes a lot of sense. Are you willing to defer to speak to your neighbors some more and, and look at a potential other entrance into Old Hickory? Or it may not be possible. I have no idea. But. Um. I wasn't able to speak directly uh, with my pastor in regards to the matter. I did speak to my um, the assistant pastor, um, and he was of the opinion that uh, we would continue. Um, 
I, I do want to, um, in listening with the neighbors concern, first of all, I want to um, acknowledge them and thank them for you know acknowledging us as good neighbors. That's what we want to be. That's what we will continue to be. Um, in terms of the capacity, um, we're still under we're under DHS guidelines as a daycare, and so the 75 is the maximum allowable. However, they still have guidelines in terms of based on furniture what the real capacity will be, which could be less than the 75. Which you know, if the daycare were to add traffic to the area, then it would be less than the 75, which is you know part of the application process. So, uh, are are you willing to defer today then? Um, the indication I have is not to. Um, I'm just a representative, but uh. and 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 so it, and how it usually works is that if if um, if we feel like that you sh should go back and communicate and we defer it, then you end up being last on the agenda next time you're heard. And if you decide that you are willing to take that initiative, then you get to be heard first. That That's the incentive for you deciding to defer. But if you choose not to, that's certainly your right and you don't have to. Um, but I do think that what, what I hear from, I hear some issues that are really beyond your church's control, but they're important neighborhood issues. And, and those are the kind of things that, um, in order to, to gain consensus and acceptance. And I think, I mean, I, th I think it would be a lovely place to have a, a child care center. I mean, it, it looks like it's a, a very large piece of property. It looks like there's a lot of, you know, area to play. I mean, it, 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 it looks like it could be a pretty cool place uh, for a child care center. So I don't have really a, a problem with that. I do, I do like, as some of my fellow members like, to have kind of all options exhausted when there is serious and I think legitimate concern. And, and I'll mention basically what we said through the first applicant. You know, I don't know how people are going to vote, but it seems like two people over here want to defer it. Mm -hmm. You need four votes. Okay. So what would you like to do? Um, Before you answer, let me ask you, did you have a community meeting per se? Yes, sir, on the 24th. Okay. Sir. Oh, the question about deferral or not. I mean, you have every right to present your case and we'll vote on it, but, you know, it seems to me if you need four votes and two people seem to be leaning toward a deferral, you know, it's your call, but, you know, that's what we said to the first person when it looked right. different. Um, could, I, could I also add, though, that um, when, when we look at the purpose of, when we look at our community and our media errands and the purpose of, um, you know, obviously recruiting students or making our services available, you know, Apple Valley is right there in the picture. October Woods is uh, on the Old Hickory Boulevard side near, uh, near the interstate. Uh, I myself live in Cane Ridge. Um, in I, Cane Ridge. I, I understand yeah, I, that, I but we have opposition and it, right, the, okay. the, the, it's, this isn't the time to kind of argue your case unless you want to, but what we're saying is considering what these two people potentially more want, I mean. And, and here's, you know, if, if let's just hypothetically say we deferred it and you came back um, in I think 45, however many days we have between now, yeah, June, 5th. June 5th, and you said, you know, I met with the city council person and we agreed that there is Traffic issues on what I can't read anymore. I need uh, on Battle Road. Sorry, and you know the council member is willing to work on traffic calming issues. That is completely separate, but we've taken the initiative to address those uh, additional issues that, that the daycare center might raise. We've talked with Public Works, and I don't know what the answer is. It is not possible to have an entrance off of Old Hickory, but we've, we've at least explored that idea and it's not possible because, or they said it is possible and so we are presenting a three-year plan or a two-year plan or we really, you know, we're raising money, you know, you, here's the plan for making that happen. Then it becomes kind of a no-brainer. I mean, it's like, well, of course, you know, you've, you've done everything you can to address all the issues that are out there that are kind of within your control. So that's, that's what I'm saying. If you can help remove those barriers, then I think that it's, like I said, in my opinion, but and I'm only expressing my own opinion, it, uh, the, the, the fact that you want to put a daycare is, is not, 
a concern to me. I think it would be a, a good thing. But the other issues I think are legitimate, and I think you all probably have a little bit of responsibility since it's you asking for it for just to, to help calm some of that concern. May I ask, I'm, I'm a novice at this. Please forgive me. Um, this is actually my first time, you know, at a hearing. Um, what's the, what's procedurally what would happen if it is, you know, not approved today? Is there any recourse? What's the process, if I may ask? Sure. And Joey, what? Yeah, that, there you go, Joey. Well, depending on how the vote goes, uh, if you have a tie vote. And since we're not having a meeting in the next 30 days, your case will be deemed denied by operation of law. I'm uh, sorry, I didn't hear. Oh, if if there's a tie vote, and or not four votes, uh, it's it'll be a tie. I mean, yeah. any yeah, any tie vote uh, that by rule it stays on our agenda for the next 30 days, but we're not meeting in 30 days. Um, so so your basically, case will be deemed denied by operation of law. Um, yeah. The alternative. Um, would be the chair or any three members by written request can hold a um, a special hearing during that time, which the only thing that would be discussed at that hearing would be what is before them and nothing more. Um, that could occur. That would have to occur within 30 days for this case to stay alive. Um, or a deferral either at the board. The board could defer your case um, for you. That could always occur, or you can choose to, a deferral. And Joey and, also explained to him what would happen if he, if a motion came up and a motion to deny, it, and the motion to deny passed, and he was absolutely denied. Didn't tell him what is. Well, if a motion to deny is um, made and seconded and has four votes, uh, it's denied, and you could not refile for six months. Okay. So it would be six months before you could file again. And, and sir, I, I want to give a more full answer just because, you know, we started woofing at you about a deferral as soon as you sat down. I, I actually think this is a great place for a daycare. I, I mean, it, it, churches are great places. You've already got the building. It's on a lot of property. So I don't want you to think, wow, we just ran into a buzzsaw. But the other thing I'm very sensitive to, because I've been before this body myself and lost, and I, we are, it pains me to say this, we're the government. And I don't ever like to be in a situation where people feel like they've been run over and they didn't have enough notice and they didn't have, and, it, and, it, and, and talking to your neighbors is just a good idea. Even if we end up with the exact same plan, if you've exhausted that we can't go on to Old Hickory and some other things and you've given more definition to we're going to have 42 kids instead of 75, that just helps. And so anyway, I, I don't want you to feel like you're being beaten on. It's just I'm really sensitive to these people leaving without the chance to have all their neighbors in, you know, so. And so uh, what you um, suggested was if I choose to defer, then it would come before the next meeting and you would be first on the agenda okay. if you if you say no y'all decide and we say exactly what we just said is well you know there's not enough votes maybe or maybe not to pass it or deny it we want to continue it and ask you to do the things that that we're talking about then you're last on the agenda so there's if you if you if you get a sense that it's going to get deferred then your your best interest is to say uh, unless you just want to sit through the whole meeting again uh, is to say no I'll, I'd like to defer it so I can have a chance to look at some of these issues and then you'll be first on the agenda okay. and I, I don't mean to uh, belabor these proceed I just want to you know full understanding so I could communicate that uh, obviously to the leadership at, at the church um, and so the concern, um, as I understand, is, is being able to communicate with all of our neighbors, uh, not so the one that were, you know, we did within respect to the guidelines um, and trying to exhaust to make sure that we've looked at um, what the uh, possible effects would be of, you know, granting this, uh, this approval, correct? And, and how can we bring as much traffic calming to an area that needs traffic calming as possible, you know? And I think the council, your council person, should be a good resource there to, in that discussion, especially. That would be a job I think your council person um, it would would be in in in, in his or her yes you know, 
realm of interest. Okay. Okay, I just want to say with all respect for my colleagues, I think this gentleman's done everything he's supposed to do by law, and I'm very mindful of the people that are here in opposition, but they're really the only people that are entitled to know. And so what my colleagues are telling you is as a courtesy, not as a requirement, it may serve you well into the future if you make an effort to speak to those outside the boundaries of who you are required to occupy. But I think, uh, would it be beneficial to you if we took a recess for you to speak with your church leadership before you make a decision to defer the case until June 5th? That would be greatly appreciated. Okay. <laughs> That's a great suggestion. And we're in recess for five minutes. Appellants uh, here at the table, and I'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Chairman, to uh, start the meeting back. Great. Uh, would you like to speak? Yes. Um, wasn't able to directly contact my pastor, but I think just based on what we've heard and what I'm hearing from uh, the board, it'll probably be best to get more consensus and give opportunity to hear all the concerns. So I would um, ask you know, to defer so that we can do that, so we can you know, have full assurance that you know, we, we have the consensus and that we're doing what's best for our community and that uh, everyone you know, has a voice in that. Well, thank you. I think that's very wise and, and, a, and a good decision. And so you'll be a first on the agenda for June 5. June 5. Mr. Not to influence your thing. Uh, the way the board currently lays, you four plus Mr. Ewing would have to catch up to this part. Are the only members that could participate in this case? The four of us. The, right. the four so of us, I, of Mr. Ewing. Yes, I need make you it an open back. Uh, if there's a couple of you here who, hey, I'm not sure I'll be here June fifth. Uh, my advice would be a, a vote of a tie vote and let us re-advertise it and just reset and then the whole seven can hear it again. I, I actually think that's a great idea because, I mean... Um, it, you're going to end up at the same place anyway, but you right. open it to all seven members and you're not restricted to these five. And truthfully, it's not that long a case. And so it's not. Okay. I think that's a great idea. So... So the procedure. That's right. You can't. Uh, after asking for half an hour to defer, you can now reject its request. Um, you know, I mean, does anybody expect to be out on the fifth? Or we staff meet the other two members, make sure they watch the tape and participate. Yeah, I, th I think that's probably a better. Pressure. I will pressure this. A better answer. I mean, the, just uh, if if you know, uh, because the, this. It, this this part of the hearing was not that long, I don't think. Okay. Maybe not. I'll, I'll work on that for you. Guys. Yeah, I, I, I think that yeah, a real a real vote. But either way, I think it's a great idea if we have all seven hear it. So, we accept your request for a deferral, and you'll be first on the agenda for June five. Okay. Thank you. With that, the uh, members, I'll. I'll Make sure the other two members are provided the, the uh, copies of today's proceedings as well as the paper record. Uh, for the folks in the, in the audience, what that means is uh, if the other two members who were not here do watch the hearing and do read over the things turned in, they will be eligible to participate. If they don't, it'll just be the five members that you saw here present. Uh, it will be the first case on the agenda. We will send out uh, letters. Unfortunately, you guys are beyond 600 feet, but work with the pastor on um, meeting together. Thank you all. Uh, with that, the Board of Zion Appeals will be adjourned for today. Thank you.